The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday, which was Reformation Sunday. We're looking at Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, where the Apostle John wrote, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. My dear friends in Christ, in our reading, in his vision, John says that he saw, he saw another angel flying in midair. And he said of that angel, this angel had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. You know, we live in a world that's full of partiality and prejudice, but isn't it a wonderful fact to know that God, in God, there is no partiality, no prejudice at all in his desire to reach absolutely everyone with the eternal gospel message. What he does is he goes after people individually. It doesn't matter who they are, where they are, it does, those things don't matter. What God did, does is God looks at people and, and he looks at their eternal souls. He looks into their hearts. The Apostle Paul said, God our Savior wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. The Apostle Peter said, The Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. And now see, it's our Lord's greatest desire to reach people with the eternal gospel. And, and really, isn't that also our greatest desire as well, to reach people with the eternal gospel? So may each of us be an angel of the eternal gospel to everyone. That's what Martin Luther was an angel of the eternal gospel. God used him to get that gospel message out to more and more people. And, and that's what every Christian really is going to want to be as, as well. We often do hear people who talk about how they're trying to figure out how they can leave their mark or their imprint on this world. And, you know, here... People would go after fame and power and glory, but the best way in which we can leave our mark or our imprint on this world is by being angels of the eternal gospel to everyone, by being messengers from God with the gospel to the world so people can know about Jesus, their Savior, and the way to eternal life. The angel in John's vision said, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. God stands here above the heavens and the earth. He created them and everything in them. And as the true judge over all things, well, as Jesus said, he can destroy both soul and body in hell. So this section is God's strong word of warning to those who would dishonor him, those who would reject him. But, but the angel continues, Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Those words are a beautiful gospel invitation through which the Holy Spirit can work to to reach hearts and take people who are unbelievers and, 
and create faith in their hearts and and through words like this the Holy Spirit can also work to build up and strengthen people in their faith in the Savior Jesus. Well now by God's grace he has worked on our hearts. He has worked on our hearts and and the fact is is that he wants more and more people to be reached with that eternal gospel. He wants more and more people to know about God, the God who hates sin, but then loves the sinner and gave us Jesus to be our Savior. Gave us Jesus to be our Savior so that we don't have to fear the judgment, but we can look forward to eternal life in heaven. Because God wants more and more people in his believing family, we're being encouraged here to be angels of the eternal gospel to, to everyone. In the Times Reporter of New Philadelphia, Ohio, it was reported back in September of, of 1985 that there was a celebration at a New Orleans city pool and this celebration was organized to celebrate the fact that they had gone through an entire summer without any drownings in any New Orleans city pool. Well, for this celebration, in honor of the occasion, 200 people gathered at that pool and at the pool, there were a hundred certified lifeguards. And as the party was breaking up, what happened is that four lifeguards that were on duty, they began to clear the pool and tragically what they found was a, a fully dressed body at the deep end of the pool. They tried to resuscitate him to Nothing happened. They could not revive that man. He had passed away. It was too late. And now think about this. He had been surrounded by lifeguards who were celebrating their successful season. Ironic when you think about it. I wonder how many people around us are drowning in sin and unbelief while we who could help them don't realize it. We don't realize that they're drowning in the sin and unbelief of this world. It's tragic when you think about it that all of us who are Christians, that we don't do more to reach out to all the unbelieving people in the world. And, and there are plenty of them right around us. Well, we who know the grace and love of God, what we'll want to do is whatever we can, all we can to get the gospel out to all the world. But let's never forget about those people who are close to us, who might just be waiting to hear about Jesus from us. May God help each of us to be well, like Martin Luther, to be an angel of the eternal gospel to everyone. Well, remember again that Luther in his early years, he really knew God's law, but he didn't really know about Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. And, and that just meant that he was struggling and he was despairing so much in his life. But then the Holy Spirit worked through the word, through, through the eternal gospel to break through the darkness of his life and, and show him the grace and love of God. And that gave Luther such joy personally and it gave him even more joy as he worked, as he served as an angel of the eternal gospel to everyone he could. Oh, how Luther loved the gospel and how Luther loved sharing the gospel, being an angel of the eternal gospel. And well, how you and I, 
But we also love that gospel message, that message that Jesus is our Savior and, and well, what joy it gives us to know Jesus is our Savior and that joy can only be increased when we, like Luther, serve as angels of the eternal gospel to everyone. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the eternal gospel which breaks through the darkness of this sinful world. We know that we are faced with many trials, troubles, and temptations in this life, but by your grace we also know the eternal gospel which breaks through that darkness. It assures us that Jesus lived and died for us and paid for all our sins and won for us heaven. Therefore, help us fix our eyes not on life's trials and troubles, but instead on, on your eternal gospel, the answer to the darkness of this world, and, and help us, like Luther, to be angels of the eternal gospel to everyone. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.